In terms of the historical data you've drawn upon, how does 2015 compare with earlier periods? And is there a, a high watermark for systemic stability in a global economy? For systemic stability, well, you know, the further back we go, the more stable it looks. Um, and I mean, we have only gone back, we can only go back easily to about 2000. But honestly, I think that, that these pressures have been building over time as the financial institutions get more involved in, in, uh, in competitive and, uh, and expansionary uh, products. And so the, the risks have gone up, peaking in, uh, in 2008 and then peaking again in uh, 2012. So I guess the golden era would be you know, well before the financial crisis started. Looking at it from a regional perspective, I know the measures you've developed take a, a health check on the global economy, but I wonder if there's any insights you can draw upon about the structural features that apply separately to Europe, North America, and Asia. Yes, we see the, this, uh, this global picture is really very different for the three continents, as you, as you mentioned. In the U.S., there has been a substantial improvement. It is, it is uh, considerably uh, lower measures of risk now than we've had since well before the financial crisis. Um, in, uh, in Europe, things are have come down a little bit, but are still very high, and we think the risk has remained quite high. When you look at Asia, you see a totally different picture. It's been increasing very dramatically from basically a, a, a period at, or before the financial crisis where there seemed to be no risk to a small increase during the financial crisis of 2008, and then skyrocketing increases uh, since then. And if you kind of decompose that part into the, the part which is due to the, the, the biggest economies, you see that uh, Japan has been high for several years now. It, there is an improvement, I think, associated with the beginning of Abe economics, but it hasn't improved since then. It, it's just like there's a drop in the, in the S risk, but to just a new level. And in China, the increase has been very dramatic over the last two or three years with a surprising reversal in the last couple of months, which are due to the rapid increase in the Shanghai stock market over that period. And, you know, that's a topic we could spend a lot of time on, but it, it does have the possibility that the, that the banking sector in China will look better from uh, now going forward, but, but I don't know whether this is just a temporary bubble or whether this is something that's going to uh, sustain. And what are your thoughts on the Australian economy and the big four banks in this period? Well, you know, the thing about Australia is from our measures, it's a little bit boring because the banks actually look pretty strong. We see, we, we see that, that it, at least the, the big four, uh, at, at most, one of them might need to raise a little capital if we have a financial crisis. But the the, uh, the leverage ratios, that is the debt to equity ratios for these banks, are all uh, less than 10, which is a, a strong sign. And so basically, our, our view is that, at least from a global perspective, it doesn't look like uh, the Australian banks are, are uh, very risky in, in the systemic sense.